Bills, let's not beat around the bush. You've had cyber security issues. You've had your Twitter account famously hacked by Tiga Tawari. Uh, but you haven't had any incidents since. What's what's happened? No, I haven't. And that, and that was a that, I lost 10,000 10, plus followers that day when Tiga Tawari hacked into my Twitter account. But I don't have that problem anymore because I use NordVPN. And NordVPN has doubled down on keeping not just me, but everybody safe with their new threat protection feature. Say goodbye to intrusive website ads and malware. Even if you download an infected file using NordVPN, the threat protection kicks in and deletes it before it even makes it onto your computer. So the cybersecurity in NordVPN is one of the one of the highlights of the this VPN, not just to mention you can see whatever sports you want from all around the world. You can watch your favorite anime. You don't have to go to Japan just to watch anime. You can do it from your home now using NordVPN. So I suggest to our listeners, we all need VPNs. We all use VPNs. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash social distance. You'll get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months free. And it's a com- completely risk-free as well, Jones. It's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Well, I'll tell you, one bloke who needs it, GB, the amount of uh, viruses he's been getting on his old lappy. You know me, mate. I'm big on anime. So <laughs> pretty stoked. I don't have to keep flying to Japan for that. Welcome back to the Social Distance Podcast, everyone. George is currently... Just about to roll down the start ramp in UAE Tour for Stage 2 time trials. We've got Daryl Limpy, our forever loyal fill-in. Uh, he comes on. We talk about us as DSs together and down under. We just talk about DS groups in general, how they work, how do race programs get decided, how do we decide which races we go to, do we get paid bonuses? No, we don't, but we talk all about that. We talk about rider bonuses, economics of cycling, should it be more transparent, a whole bunch of different things. And Daryl talks about... The amount of spiders he's been killing in Sydney because he's shit scared. Like, share, subscribe. Let's, let's just run the intro and wing it like we always do and see what comes out of it. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Mm. Front kick! Just getting bored and dark, look at My radar's going pretty hard at the moment, I think. Will you Who shut up, man? Person? That escalated quickly. Oh, We're going to need to get some more qualified guests on this, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> The best thing about having Impson sit in the wings is he always says yes. Like he, yeah. George, is, George is a couple of hours away from lining up in a time trial at um, UAE tour. And given the fact there's a, about a shit ton of cybersecurity um, hoops to jump through in UAE, it's not possible to get him on the show. But Daz always says yes. So he's, he's our loyal, our loyal fill in. I mean, you're more than a fill in. You're more than a fill in, but for lack of a better term, honorary. Honorary member. Yeah. Well, you're an honor, honorary Australian now too. Like, yeah, uh, exactly. I think we were touching on that last time you were on the show, like the big move to Sydney, but, mate, it's happened well, now. I'm, I'm, well, you know my it. inbox is flooded with you networking Quest. in Sydney. You're, you're right. everywhere, mate. I'm an HG at the moment, not 5G. <laughs> I'm an HG. Um, the, the, the funny thing is that, you know, George is always talking about, like, you know, remember last time we did the ep, well, when I was last on it, George kind of said, like, I let, didn't let Israel down with points. But, like, if you if you turn the social distance podcast around on him, I think he's letting you boys down a fair bit, eh? He's, what's he a- bringing to the party? He was saying that I wasn't bringing any points to the party, but, I mean, what's mm, he bringing? You, I mean, to be fair, you didn't. You brought, like, seven. But the if if we ran like a UCI, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was going to bring six hundred by this time last year. <laughs> if if we ran a UCI point system just purely based on appearances on the social distance podcast, oh. like you'd be you'd be behind George Daz, but you wouldn't you would you'd be snapping at the heels. Uh, yeah, I've caught a couple of fishing fishing lines that have been thrown out by Jonesy. I've come oh, on yeah. those ones, the fishing ones, and. Um, but no matter what you're at. doing, even if even if you're on a ride, you'll stop what you're doing just to get the quick check in. Like, Wait, uh, loyal. You, 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 I know you guys need me. That's that's what it's about. It's about well, knowing that your mates need you. Well, how do you know what it is? It's that because you're living in Australia now, you're on the same time zone as um, as Jonesy, and generally, me and George are on the same time zone. We can't operate more than two time zones amongst mm. across three people. So that's kind of the idea behind it. At least from my side, we mm. could have done this morning, but we had our team conference call, so like we couldn't mm. take that slot. Yeah, Fuck, yeah. I laughed at I laughed at call last night when <laughs> one of the one, we had a sports directors call, and one of the directors asked Daryl, "What time is it where you are, Daryl?" 
And Daryl was on mute and he was talking and but he was on mute. And then eventually they're like, oh, you're on mute, Daryl. And then he just eventually unmutes and just goes, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> that's early. That's an early conference call. Yeah, mate. That's when I, that's when I, that's when I come up with all my great wisdom. That's where Down Under plan was hashed, mate. That's where it came, mm. all that wisdom. Well, that's yeah. what I wanted to bring up because the punters haven't heard your, your version of events. We saw in the last potty, we showed highlights in the car. You know, Bewley did get a lot of the credit, let's be honest, for that win. There, there was well, he was, sort of the, he was, the, he was the main death. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was the main, he was the main dog. What, what's the real story, Daryl? Unfiltered. Nah. Uh, uh, you know, Jonesy, we, Sam and I work really well together. It was actually good synergy there. Um, yeah. I think it's quite rare that you get to work with your mates and a good mm. mate, you know? Um, so, like, where I probably would have dropped the ball or just kind of, you know, working with someone else new, maybe they wouldn't have given me so much leeway when I came in. But Sam kind of picked up the little bit of areas where he felt like I slacked. Well, not slack, but I just didn't know what to do. Just like, know, there was yeah. some part. There was just some parts where, like, you just, oh, I didn't think of that. Like, oh, I forgot I had to do that. Like, and he would just pick up those pieces, and then it's easy, yeah. you know. Then you just kind of just, uh, like, the whole week it wasn't about like I didn't feel there was an issue with us being like DS1, DS2. It was more like we were in it together. We were a team, you know. So. um it was good, man. It was good to. Uh, I know how important down and days for everybody, and uh, I, I, um, I've been on both sides. I've actually been on so many sides of down under. So um, now to be on the director's winning side, and then oh, cool, man! It was such a cool. Well, it, was, it, was, it was so cool. From my side, it was just finally good to win down under with you, Daz, because I wasn't there either the times you did. So yeah. at least we did. At least we did together once. For now, exactly. Once for now. Once yeah. for now. Once, once for now, we're going back next year. Back to back, baby. You know what? I, you know I, actually, what? Fucked, I actually fucked up in that thing when I said uh, back to back. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, back yeah, yeah. to back. And then, and I was then, thinking like, that. Actually, Corbin came to me. He's like, yeah, what was the back to back thing? I was like, I, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then afterwards, I was like, well, Stevie. Well, you know, like it's back to back wins with Stevie because, like, I've only done two races at that stage. I've only done two races with Stevie. One was in Norway when I was his teammate riding and he won, and now director and he won. So I was like, I was like, oh, we can claim that if someone like really, really gets like quirky, you know, really yeah, well, stretching, something, mate. you know, yeah, well, I, yeah. I have no idea why I said that. But, but anyway. The best yard to come out of that tour down under was the pie story. <laughs> at the is, that the zone, biggest, yeah. is that your biggest fuck up for the week? The pies at well, the feed zone. I've never seen someone stress so much, mate. Like he's like because I was, he goes, "Hey, this is a fuck up. We should have, we should have, we should have gone now." I'm like, "Yeah, well, the pie's coming." Like, and Yarrick's out the car. I'm like, well, bro, you can't just drive off. Yarrick's out the car now. So yeah, well, we should be getting on the road now. You know, like we should be going. And like Phoebe's, Phoebe's like trying to. People are trying to stop the cars. We've got this three pies thing there. And Yarrick's just like not sure what to do. And Sam's like. Bro, just go, just go. I'm like, we can't just go. <laughs> like, and then we all got, and then he's like, then someone said something on the radio, and he was like, yeah. like oh, no, 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 now they need us, now they need us. I said, no, man, I, don't, uh, they, I think they were just asking something. And then he was like, he was actually quite panicked. Eh? Like, I actually didn't yeah, expect yeah. that from a, such an experienced director, someone who's been doing it for a year, you know? <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. more the point that it was like, if something went wrong, we had no fucking leg to stand on. Why weren't we there? We were getting a fucking yeah. pie. You know? It was like it wasn't like we were we were barraged or or we couldn't get past a whole bunch of riders or like this this like you know things that happen often. It was like we stopped to get a pie. You, <laughs> so, you know what? You like, need? It, it's the same thing. You stop for a person, things can happen too. Yeah, like, you stop for a person, things can happen. Like anything can happen. So like, I, I kind of put that as the same thing. Like okay, we stop for a pee. You know. Mm. Oh, and and you know it, where everyone does it. It's just you know it where you just, broke was... down. I, I was listening to an audio book uh, the other day with David Goggins. You know, he's he's a mad dog. But what he does, he plans for every scenario before it happens, before he starts. So you need to prepare for every scenario where it's like, all right, we've ordered these pies, but if for whatever reason we can't get the pies within five seconds, we go. You know, mm. I, I generally try to do that with strategy. I always try to do like, yeah, but what if this person doesn't get over the climb and the other director might go, no, nah, but he will. But yeah, but what if he doesn't? What's the yeah. plan then? You've got to apply but I've to never thought though. about what happens Pies. if the DS who's driving in his first ever race yeah. stops on the wrong side of the road 
and we have to spend two minutes waiting to get pies. I have. Well, I, I didn't even. Know, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know she was. Yeah, but I didn't even know she was standing there for the pies, and just saw Phoebe, and you're like, stop. And I was like, oh, stop, wait, wait. And then I just like went, <laughs> you know, just natural. Stuck yeah, yeah. on the wrong side. Yeah. yeah. And it, it is kind Man. of hard over there because uh, um, it is quite confusing because pies, pies aside, convoys on the left hand side of the road, which is obviously the opposite to Europe. You're on the right hand side of the road. And in Europe, you're, you, the convoy, the cars are on the right hand side of the road and, and everything's on the that's happening on the edge of the road. So feed zone or uh, if you have to stop to punch it, all of that happens on the right hand side of the road. So the whole, every, everything is on the same side of the road. Whereas in Australia, you have to drive on the left hand side of the road, but they're feeding on the right hand side of the road just for logistical ease of, of European Peloton. So when cars stop in the feed zone, which happens every single feed zone, to pick up musette bags or, or more ice socks or more bottles or whatever it is, you're already there. But this time you actually have to go across the road. So it is a little bit confusing. So I can understand the fuck up. Yeah. Now, now that we've got you on, <laughs> Daryl, we, 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 I think we dedicated a whole show when Billy transitioned outside of being a professional bike rider into the DS. How, mm. how have you found... Now that you you're not forced to ride X amount of Ks a week, are you saying that you still need to sweat, still need, still need to hit the track, or are you enjoying the whole freedom of like fuck it, don't have to ride it, I do whatever I want. No, I don't. I, I don't like put any pressure on training at all. I don't even call it training anymore. It's just exercise. So I got yeah. a, I got yeah. some guys I ride with here, and it's it's fun. Uh, I don't uh, yeah no pressure or anything. And it actually meant. Seriously, when I was looking at like the down under start list, like going there with riders, and I was thinking, oh, if I was a rider now, I'd be shitting myself. Because it's just like, you see all the sprinters there, and you're thinking about, oh, which guy you got to lean against, and which team you got to fight, and you know, like, Bora's going to be there, and there's going to be Mullen, and he's going to be pushing people, and you just like, you just know everyone's going to be annoying each other, and it's just like, uh, yeah, oh, I'm actually glad I'm out of that space now, you know? Mm-hmm. I think I just had enough of it. Like, I, I used to mm-hmm. love racing. When I was racing, it was awesome. Um, I miss feeling fit. That's the only thing. Like I miss feeling like, wow, oh, she's on top of it when you go riding, you feel great. Now like the heels hurt. Um yeah, oh, and, and like I, I get to like two hours and I've like I just want to go home. I think like how the hell did I ride five hours, you know? Like it's mm. almost seems impossible nearly. Um but yeah, I, I'm I'm enjoying being with the kids and stuff, man. Like um I miss yeah, I, I miss the camaraderie. Like it was weird, like winning down under uh, as on the team as a DS compared to riding, like you still have great emotions. But like I realized like when you win as a rider in a team, like you still as riders like you know, you still like celebrate together. You don't always include the staff straight away. Like yeah. the riders will still like have their beers together and do their thing because they've done it, you know. And like I kind of like realized then like, oh yeah, this is the this is the big change, like the big difference. Whereas like when you're a rider, you kind of just like, oh, we're gonna have beers in the room and we organize, and then like maybe Whitey or someone would have come in and then like just joined us. But you you don't, you, it's not the same. Like you know, yeah. it, like it was a weird, it was weird, but like, it was still like super like. You know, we it was unexpected for us. We knew we had a chance, but um, you know, to pull pull the wool over everyone's eyes and just like get it done it was good. Do you know what the hardest thing is? I reckon that, that I found, and you probably found. I don't know if it's maybe it's not hard, but it's a, it's an interesting dynamic. Is like especially with the group we had it down under. So like most, I I didn't race with those guys because I I never raced on Israel Premier Tech, um, but like. They're still my peers in some ways because of the age, the age, and I did race in the peloton with them. And you know, there's obviously George is, George is there. He's a good mate of mine. You know, like a good relationship with Stevie, good relationship with Corbin, with Clarkie. You know, all of those guys. But then you've got the extra dynamic, Daryl, where you raced with them um, in the same team. Like you roomed with some of those guys, mm. and and you do create like a friendship and and a relationship that's that's you're you're the you're equals. You're both bike riders, and you both have the same complaints, and you both have the same yeah, everything else. Mm. And then when you have to be a director, you still you still you're still their mate. And you have to be their mate. I think it's really important. It creates that really good atmosphere and vibe that we had in Australia. But there still has to be that little line there at a certain point where you've got to sometimes go like come down on something or, mm. or make a decision on something or or let somebody down with a decision you have to make. Or uh, you know, and 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 that's where it where it gets really hard, I think, is when like when you have to say to someone. You know, it could be your best mate in a situation 
um, where you have to say, I know you want to have a crack today, but we're going for someone else. You know, and, and that, that yeah. kind of stuff's that kind of stuff's hard, and that's the stuff that that takes a little bit of time to get used to. I mean, and you're you're naturally pretty good at that because you were like that anyway as a writer. Um, but it, it is an interesting dynamic to um to approach and, and sort of manage. I reckon. Just on that, yeah. I, I, I was just going to say, you know how in most teams there's always writers that you can see a sniveling to get in good with a certain director, so they get almost you know, spoon fed good races, all this sort of shit. Can you almost pick up on that with writers or is that one a thing of the past? Like writers nowadays, the modern day don't even think like that. Uh, it's not like it's not like writers um kind of sucking up to you or whatever. It's more like the it's more like they want you to ask the questions they don't want to ask. But like mm. you're also like are you also like uh, uh you're like pushing it a bit now mate like you know like I, I, I'm not going to ask if you can fly this way instead of that way. Like, you're just being a little bit difficult now or whatever. Then you kind of just got to go like, actually, no, ask yourself, you know? And then that's kind of mm. the, that's kind of when you put the barrier. You go like, no, nah, I'm not going there. Then they know like, all right, I, I'm not going to push him just to do all my dirty work all the time, you know? Like, because it's, it's harder for them to say, oh, listen, I, actually, what's the reason? Like, I, I could say, oh, because so-and-so doesn't want to fly this way, you know? But he, he's just... Uh, just, no, I think you get it. I think that's where they push the boundaries a little bit. Like they try and push a little bit of the mate thing, or like, or like, yeah. you, like kind of like program like which way they want to go, or like, oh, I don't want to do that race. See if I can get out of that race. And you're like, yeah, uh, I can, I can see why that. No, I, like if I was a rider, I would be saying like, oh yeah, man, that's a shit race. I don't want to go to that race either. Like, oh, you down mm. on that? Oh, I would try everything to get off it, you know. But like now, as a director, you kind of like see it, and you're like. I can see why they expect you to go there because you're going to be needing to help someone or uh, there's an objective there and we actually need you. That's where it's like uh, hard to deal with. Yeah, challenging. I, I, I used to think, or used to think, I've been doing it for a year, but for a little while I thought to myself, like, um, oh, they're pushing the friendship card, this person or that person. But actually I, I've changed my tune a little bit on that. And like, I don't think they are pushing the friendship card. I think it's just because you have a good relationship, they're more comfortable to ask you things mm. because I think it's more that sometimes that they're more comfortable to be, come to you with these questions or with these concerns because of your relationship with them. And and Daryl's right that like when you're a writer, you, you see you only, you've only got tunnel vision and you're like, why the fuck do I have to go there? I don't want to go there. But then, actually, behind the scenes, there's a whole bunch of other things happening, and there's a, and there's there's always a reason, and there's always generally a very good reason why something is happening, and as long as you're educated and you've done the due diligence and you've and you've spoken to, you know, the head sports director or or the mechanic or whoever it is about that particular thing, and you understand it well, then you can actually tell the rider pretty clearly. No, this is why it's happening this way, and generally they understand. But you, if you don't know the answer and you're like, oh yeah, because uh, this that, and then you kind of lose, you lose the crowd a little bit. But if you if you just know straight away, like this is why it's happening, boom, 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 boom. This is the reasons behind it. Generally, they go, oh okay, makes sense. So that's 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 a that's a big part of it. I think it's just understanding and just being just un, and just knowing that you know people they feel comfortable to come to you, Daryl, or to me, or whoever it is, you know, and 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 ask different things. So that. I reckon that's more what it is than so you, so much than pushing the friendship card. Do you reckon the number one breakdown, right? And this is just what I observed with, say, Green Edge. That's my only experience. Is communication number one? If if communication goes to shit and you're not open and constantly talking to writers, that's number one reason why they get the nose out joint. Like you're talking before about writers, they're normal. They don't want to do certain races or whatever. But as long as there's constant communication flow. And you always feel like you're in the loop. I feel that if the writer goes through a career and it gets to a point where they feel like they're not in the loop, that's not one of the number one causes of a breakdown with with that. And if, then it spews. And if one writer's got a nose out joint, they talk to the other writers, and then it spreads. Yeah, mm, and I, I think it's, I, I, I think it's communication is important, but I think it's also like just writers to be comfortable that they know you're on their side as well when you when you have to be. When there's, a, when there's a reason to be on their side, they know you like fully back them. I think that's important. And I think like having raced with these guys and also Sam coming off the, you know, the Peloton. So like, like recently, um, I think 
we had that was our advantage in like a race like down under and us being able to like also like be a part of these guys like when we were mm-hmm. playing cricket and that in between like Cadell Evans and that like just for fun like we were there you know we were bowling to them it wasn't this like director rider split it was kind of like we we're all just mates like playing cricket together and I think being fresh and younger in the peloton that gives it allows you to get that advantage so if you exploit it and you kind of use it uh i think that you can you can get a really good like advantage and i think a lot of you know then when you come into the race plan race strategy and they see us like not every night just like you know they see us like during the day like okay we're having fun at night but they know we've been doing other things and like being on top of everything and there's nothing missing then they kind of feel like oh geez these guys are backing us 100 percent here so i think it also comes down to like having a good team that goes like that the boys feel so comfortable around. Mm. And and like on top of that communication thing, like yeah, communication is really important. Sometimes things don't need to be communicated. Like sometimes sometimes there are things that it's it's better that it's need to know basis. Um mm. but on I think what's most important is transparency when you're dealing with athletes. Mm. So like basically just just don't bullshit a bullshitter. That's yeah. what it comes down to. Because these guys aren't fucking stupid. And they didn't mm. come down in the first shower of rain. And when you give them some bullshit story about why one thing's happening or another, they go, oh, fuck. That's yeah. not true. You know? So it's it's more about some things you like, okay, the reason I haven't communicated this is because it's not confirmed yet or there's still a process to go follow or there's still a, a reasons why that hasn't been communicated to yet. But if you ask me and that process is still happening, then I'll be transparent with you and tell you, this is why I haven't told you yet. And this is why I can't give you an answer yet. So it's more about being transparent in, in, in a lot of situations, I reckon. Don't bullshit, basically. Don't bullshit people. How many more years do you reckon you've got before your bread rolls start getting a bit stale? Like you're talking about no, using it one, to your advantage, but you're fresh? Yeah. You're it's a window two. of two years? Yeah. Well, man, honestly, honestly, I like. I, I think like every job in the world, like I think riders, you have a, you have a professional rider, you have a certain shelf life. And I, and I do feel directors also have a shelf life and so does a team owner of a team also has a shelf life like you can't continue to progress and to like maybe you can have a longer shelf life but i think for this for your team to evolve and for the sport to evolve like you you do exceed your exceed your days eventually the sometimes father time does come in and go okay there's you know i'm not saying that the directors that are older these days are you know but i think the you're seeing a lot of teams now like hiring a lot of younger directors and it's not because the new di- the older directors are well are, are bad directors but i think just relationship wise being able to relate to the riders it's you know sometimes the directors talk about like we were at just last year we had a, a miguel injurain and some of the new young riders didn't know they were like why is this race called GP Inch? Do you like? I can't. I don't want a name. You know, I don't want a name. <laughs> but it was a young. It was a young guy, and he came and he's like, "What? What's like uh, GP injury? Like, was that like? Why do they call it GP injury?" And I'm like, "Mate, do you not know who Miguel Injurain is?" And he's like, "Miguel Injurain? Who's that?" I was like, uh, yeah. "Okay, so they can't relate to it." Like. And it's also, yeah. yeah, they just can't relate to those people. Like, if I, if I like, even say to the guys, like, oh, I rode with, like, Andreas Clodo, Levi Lapam, uh, Lards, all these guys, like, once upon a time with Sam. They're like, who's, Who? like, the young guys, they're like, who's Clodo and who's those guys? You, like, yeah. actually realize, you actually realize, like, time has changed. Like, these guys, mm. they're, they're not looking at those guys. They're actually looking at, like, guys who we used to race, with, Stewie O'Grady, and then I still, even, like, I even mean, like, Stewie's, like, kind of, like, you know, some of them oh, know him, but like they don't know. Yeah, they, they don't all know those guys. So that's fascinating. Um, it's, mm, it's crazy, yeah. But like with the D, I think like as like I think like as you you have a longer career as a DS, you just have different um, expertise. So like it's important to bring to keep bringing in young DSs like every I don't know five years or whatever it may be. To, to to have someone who's relevant and who's who's fresh out of the peloton and understands current day racing but as you get older and further and further away from the peloton you become a more experienced sports director so you actually yeah. you actually bring in you bring in different expertise because you know we we might bring the experience of the peloton you know and I'm one year removed now Daryl's only one month removed 
but we don't bring the experience of actually of of being a ds because we're still fucking learning all that shit for example stopping on the wrong side of the road when you're trying to get a pie that would never ever happen to an experienced ds you know and i and i and when i drive the car still after one year i still make these fuck ups every single day because i'm not Mm. experienced it's not second nature to me you know um when when i look at a when i look at a, a race calendar from january to december with a whole bunch of races and 30 bike riders and try and plug folks 30 bike riders into all of these races and why where it fits and what's happening after that and what's the lead and like i i just see fucking great you know because i'm not experienced with that stuff so that's where the older ds are really really important because they bring that experience and that's what creates the a group if you have eight nine ten ds's you have all those areas covered and then you have a good ds group that's that's yeah. that's kind of how it is and actually being on these ds calls like I, i've sometimes there's been like like problems you know proposed to the group like how do we fix it and i'm like oh I probably i would have just done that you know and then the, like someone else just goes oh we can't do like before i've even opened my mouth someone's got like Oh, we can't do that because, like, you know, then that will cause that, and then that will cause that, and you're like, oh yeah, I would have made a major like disaster there. I didn't think about all those other things. So you're mm. right. Like, I, I like I didn't mean to come across as like, um, you know, in with new guys after the old, but um, no, no. Like, I think I think relating to riders, like, there's definitely a place, like you say, for the new wave to kind of new younger guys to relate to them, and then there's the other part where it's like, um, like there's experience to it um like especially men driving like driving but you're driving's right like a, you're right nightmare. Like, you're right the reality is like you need to yeah. have young out of the palace on ds's that's just the reality like if you yeah. don't have them you're on the back foot 100 percent. yeah so yeah. you're actually right yeah well there's some parts like like i remember even some races like going and they're like i'm like they've blocked the road you can't get through and they're like what do you mean they blocked the road it's like like when blocking the road was a thing they're like what do you mean blocking the road it's like no you just push past no, you, you, you I don't understand. There's like two, three teams blocking the road. There's no more space to go. Guys are riding in the gutter. There's absolute, and they, I remember directors going, like, oh, what, what kind of story is that? Bullshit story. You can't get to the mm-hmm. front. I mean, it's a neutral zone. And you're like, mate, now if guys tell me like, oh, man, I couldn't get to the front. The neutral zone is hectic. I'm like, oh, I used to race. Yeah. Like, oh, I, used, I understand you guys. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's fucked, you know? Like, that doesn't mm-hmm. work. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. you, you can relate to them more. Um, and and the way cycling changed the last few years, it's just like, it's like, and it's going to continue like that as well, you know. Yeah. And 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 you I just, remember when just... Down Under was a holiday for some teams? They go, oh, here we go, we'll have a bit of fun down Adelaide. Like everyone's ready to rock and roll. Like teams are getting oh, there yeah. weeks in advance, getting acclimatized, yeah. training. Everyone's in good nick. There's no hiding anymore. Mate, it's Dude, a world like, class stage race. Yeah. At the end of the day. And it's a, but it doesn't it's, even matter a, anymore. Mm. Like which kind of stage race it is. Look, look at us in like we go to these French races. These like recon before. It's like the, the small French races, but we want to win and points are important and investing yeah. the time. You know. That's where the point system, as as shit as it was for the teams that got relegated, it's good in the sense that it keeps everyone on their toes. Yeah, I mean the the good the good part is like. like I, th- I think the the only the only shame with the points thing is like it, it just kills the small teams because now teams that are trying to like hold yeah get get positions and get points that they're like soaking up all those races and then it's like I mean it's it's already but the problem is as well then you've got in the world tour you've got such strong teams too like Jumbo and those guys coming with such a hit squad sometimes you know you're even racing for fifth or sixth and then you kind of like racing for scraps so then you're actually going to other races to try win because you're like your sponsors also need some coverage, and if you're not winning anyway, it, no no sponsor wants to be involved with a team that's not winning anyway. That's like, yeah, teams. Are, that's where it feels a bit so like stacked. that drive to survive series. Where you've got your top echelon of teams, and then you've got this battle in the middle, and then you've got these battlers down the bottom. It's yeah. just all these different battles going on. There's a real cool stat um, that I think Corbin or one of the guys at Down Under said it. Um, after after we won down under last year there was only two or uh, two or three teams i think i think it was quick step uh with remco um uae with pagacha yatesy and jumbo those they those three teams won every single world tour stage race mm. in the in the calendar so I, every single world tour stage race was only won by three teams 
So like for us, Israel Premier Tech, which is at the moment not a world to a team by, you know, official standards, to win a world to a stage race is fucking huge. And to win back to back, it's massive. And be even bigger. <laughs> yeah, there's only one rider. Right oh, there's only one rider right in the history of that down under that's ever been able to do that, Jonesy. So I think if they have him on his squad next year, you know, help with the directing again, you know, they've got a good chance. Well, he knows the tactics on how to do it. Absolutely. You I know, saw, you uh, know what the funniest part. No, you know what the funniest part of down under was. I get the end like a shitload of teams came to me and they were like, "Oh, Daryl, this tactic you're using, mate, is so like." 2000 and like 16, 18, like you know, going for bonuses and all these things. And I was like, Yeah, so well, that's that's our game. But you know, they, they were kind of like saying, like, Oh, the tactics are old, but it doesn't work it down under anymore. And like, of course, okay, we won with a different person, but the, the, it was just so funny to see like teams just go, like, kind of go, like, Oh, these young guys, the directors, they just yeah, yeah, the old, the old known tactic, you know, mm. but, <laughs> but also, like, in the prison, but, yeah. but, you know, in the end, Stevie won the last stage, so it didn't matter. But when he took the jersey after Walunga, why did he take the jersey, not Oscar on- only? For the fucking bonus seconds and stage places. So actually, it's still... So one thing the punters wouldn't know, you talked about before how the riders crack it over, you know, races that they get assigned to or whatever. How do you assign races for directors to go to? Because if I was a director, I'd be like, right, I want to go to the Canadian one-day races. Because you've only got two one-day races with a week, awesome accommodation. I want to go to places where I have minimal travel, awesome accommodation, minimal amount of days actually in the car racing, but a bigger block. Yeah. Um, a, well, a lot of it. So the head sports director does it um, in our team, and he does it really well because he does. I, I don't. I don't know the. I don't really know the answer as to how he chooses. Or how he, you know, he sends directors to one race and not another. Um, I think a lot of it is um, is like local knowledge, um, you know. So like for me and Daryl to go to Down Under makes sense. Um, uh, we're both native English speakers. Um, the you know for for Steve for head DS to go to the Canadian races makes sense because he's you know local knowledge. He's Canadian. Um, for Oscar. The Spanish director to go to the Vuelta makes sense. Um, yeah. You know, like uh, there's there's a, a lot of that stuff comes into play. Uh, for me to go to Catalonia makes sense because I've I've lived in Girona for 15 years. Uh, you know, mm. like there's, there's there's a lot. I think a lot of that stuff comes into play. For Set Van Mark to go to the Belgian Classics makes complete sense. That's what he was. That's what what his bread and butter was. He knows those races like no one else. There's, I, I yeah. think there's a lot of that. A lot of that that comes into play. An experience like. Yeah. Uh, to be to, to be a, like a, a to, so it's, to drive the Tour de France as a director, like it would be foolish to say send me to the Tour this year to go be director there to drive. Like it'd just be nuts. Mm. It's mm. you know you, you, it's a, it's also experience thing. Like the, like whether or not you know the race that well, it's also like being able to handle the the actual stress of how, it. How stress how stressful it actually is, and like. Because, you, you, you know, the tour, everything is highlighted tenfold. You can go there and make a massive mistake, you know. There could be yeah. big repercussions. So, like, yeah, I think there's also a lot of the reasoning behind it is that. And and when you go to a grand tour, you go with, um, uh, you know, typically three, three DSs. In some cases, you might go with four. Uh, and then, again, um, I don't know the answer, but I would, I would hazard a guess that, you know, you look at, okay, there's going to be a group of, three or four sports directors at the Tour de France or the Giro or the Vuelta. So you need someone who's really good logistically at things because uh, there is a lot of day-to-day logistics that need to be on, kept on top of, kept up planned. So who, which sports director is, is really good at that sort of thing? So you might bring them into the fold. Strategically, who's really good? You might bring them, that into the fold. Who has experience of Grand Tours? Or who has experience um, in working or racing? And grand tours where you're where you're doing a GC or where you're going for stages, you know. So all all of these little bits and pieces, I think, is how you probably look at it. So but then, again, how do know. they how do they rank a director's performance? Like you know, from a writer's perspective, you get results. But what if you're yeah, you know, just a so-so director, but you've got a really good squad that are pinching all these races, and it's really okay. Well, you had a good squad. How do how do they get the feedback then on if you did a good job or not? It's a good I question. 
it's, it's difficult mm. because it's difficult because there are I mean and it's only natural that you would want a rider who wins. Like you would want a rider who does yeah. well. Nobody wants nobody wants to work with someone that's like just okay uh, like not not achieving, not doing well, uh, not finishing races, not you know, and you just gotta yeah, or, or going to a race with without an objective. Like you always want a you know, a hitter in your squad or an objective. Um, but the reality is that's not always there. Uh, so, yeah, it is a tricky one because at the end of the year, when there's time to discuss a contract, and if yeah. you haven't been given a great team or you've been doing a program like maybe the C program or say of the team, uh, you know, some of the smaller races and you haven't got anything, then it kind of can reflect on you badly as well. Uh, mm. So, um I, I I had this question. Like, uh, that's why we had, a, we had a pretty shit squad at Down Under, and that's what makes Bules and I so good. So we turned it around. <laughs> oh, you guys are killing it in terms of chatting at the end of the year for bonuses and shit. Well, absolutely. That's what, that's what I was going to say. So a friend of mine asked me the other day to do sports directors. I mean, we all know, well, you know, if you guys don't know the, the listeners, a lot of riders have bonuses in their contracts for winning races. You know, so if you win a stage of the Tour de France, you might have a bonus of X amount of dollars. Um, give us a ballpark. Come on, the punters want to know. If you were back in the day, Daryl would, would know better than me. Give us, Darryl, give us a ballpark. If you want a stage of the tour, you don't have to give specific examples. But what what's reasonable? Hundred grand, euro? No, uh, hundred. Uh, Less. Uh, I think I think I think a hundred grand would be a, a generous bonus. Um, hmm. It depends. It also depends on what contract you sign. Because some guys actually sign for like uh, they they come they've come off a bad two years or whatever. But potentially they can win a stage, so then they do have massive bonuses. Maybe they have like a two hundred grand bonus. They go, mm. they sign for a team, Stock and they I go, yeah, 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 exactly. So, so maybe if like you sign for a team, you go, like, listen, these guys want to offer me, I don't know, fifty, a hundred grand, like to race this year. But I've got, if I go back to where I'm supposed to be and I win a stage in the like in the tour, it's, it's worth two hundred grand. Or if I win a monument, it's worth half a mil, you know. But then I think the guys that are on probably getting what they're on already like you're probably looking at like 30 50 you know which is pretty mm -hmm. generous um i wouldn't say more than that um but who knows you know? so. like, and that's the no, problem with yeah. cycling which i the problem i hate about cycling is nobody freaking knows anything yeah like, no transparency like, yeah i've and seen some of those numbers getting thrown around i'm like what oh, uh, it'd yeah. be a real it'd be real interesting um it would be real interesting to see how the economics of the sport would work if it was open book. Yeah. Like if, if everybody right. had, if everyone had to declare how much they're paying their riders, it would be, it would be real interesting to the economics of the sport, I reckon, because there'd be a lot of teams going and a lot of riders out there going, fucking hell, I'm, Jeez. I'm lucky. I'm getting what? paid well here. And there'd be a lot of riders going, I'm getting flicked here. And mm. it, it would, it, it would be, I don't know if it would be the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, but it would be very interesting to see. Do, do riders ever talk to each other about contracts? Like, how do you suck it out of someone? Like, over the years, do you go, come on, mate? What, I've, what you, I've what never known, out of all my good mates in Girona, there's only one guy that I've known his salary. I've never known, and I've never asked, and I never would ask. No, nah, it would have been George's. Got come on, how much? Here <laughs> <laughs> Come on, how much? <laughs> but have you ever been asked? Have you? Has anyone asked you, like directly, to uh, say, "Come on, mate"? No one's ever asked me direct, directly. Um, I've, I, I asked. I remember in everyone knew I made fuck all, so now I'm bothered. In, in Greenwich, <laughs> I think we were playing golf one time when you opened up. But moving on, I, I remember in Greenwich, in my first, my first year, one, I was on a one-year contract. Then I signed a two-year contract. Then I, I was like, ah, I was, and then I, I kind of was like. Al Gossi was the guy I was like helping at that stage, you know, and he was like the head in the team. And I was just like, I've got to ask him, like, is, is, do you think this is fair or not? And then I told him what I don't. He was like, Oh, I don't think so, mate. I think you're being a bit flicked here. And it wasn't from Green Edge, like, it was just the agent mm. I was using at that time. Um, mm. And and I I kind of just went like, Oh, well, and then I asked Stewie. I remember asking Stewie in the room, like, Hey, mate, uh, just mm. want to double check. What do you think? And he was like, oh, Daz, I think I think uh, your agent's done like a bit of a bad job there. And uh, mm. I'm not going to say who it was. But um, so then I kind of went like, oh, you know, I'll just phone Shane myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shane myself. And I was like, oh, hey, Shane, how's it going? <laughs> and then he, yeah. we had a chat and whatever. And he was like, I was like, oh, mate, so, you know, I'm doing the tour. And I've had like, 
I think I did, like, maybe. And then he was like, yeah, mate, let's do a new contract. Bang. Done. He's like, awesome. I said, oh, we're going to have to deal with an agent. That's where Shane was really good. Like, uh, he's a um, legend. Yeah, yeah. With that, he, he was he was really good at like um, valuing. Shane's the general which, manager of the team yeah. for people that don't know. Shane Bannon. Yes, Shane, Shane Bannon used to run the team. And like, um, he, from that perspective, like, I kind of felt like he was always like approachable in that sense. And not not all teams are like that. That's for sure. Like, it, that doesn't doesn't go around. Like, mm. most teams will let you see your contract out and then go, uh, let's hope he let's hope he has an okay year in the last year and then we can kind of maybe keep him the same or, you know, bump him up a little bit. It's very mm. rare that, um, but those days, like, Green is just ripping up my contract with, I still had a year to go on most of my contracts and then we're just doing a new one, which is always mm. like, it's so motivating because you're like, oh man, if I do well, they'll just change it. Um, but it was win-win teams, both sides because you were getting results yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so when, when I think, I, doing... I think, I did the same with with Shane. In the end, I, I had a manager for a few years, and then in the end, I just had I had no manager. I just did, just did my own thing, and it was purely because the way Shane operated, I never felt like I needed to have a negotiating leg to stand on because like he was actually just honest. He just made you an offer, and generally you were like, "Yeah, that's fucking yeah," you know. And yeah. and I and I didn't need to give away an X amount of percentage of my salary. To have that conversation i could do that myself there's only one time where i was like not as happy with the deal but thankfully i had another offer that was pretty good from another team so i was able to negotiate it myself and stay with the team but uh, the old was, leverage um, yeah that was, that was the only time in my whole career i had leverage once <laughs> <laughs> it's a slippery slope with leverage though is when you make up an offer that doesn't exist you always get yeah, yeah. in the ass yeah no this was a legit offer yeah. Now they talk. You, you'll be foolish to do that. These yeah, don't yeah. make no mistake. These directors talk and managers talk to each other. Go, hey, so and so says you have been offered three hundred thousand from you, and they're like, no, what? You know, they they yeah, they talk for sure. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that about we got into the the bonus thing before we went on about rider bonuses. That was good. Someone though. asked me, like that. But, yeah, it was good. Does do DSs get bonuses if yeah. um if if you you know win um and i don't know if uh, other teams in this team well at least i don't and and my feeling is that like we shouldn't we actually shouldn't get bonuses mm. because it's for starters it's our job mm. and if you do a good job regularly you'll have you'll you'll get paid more like every single mm. it you, all comes out in the wash every, every single industry if you work well and you work hard and, you, and you're there for a long time you get paid more yeah. And at the same time, you, you know, we might go to Tour Down Under with a really good squad and we might win Tour Down Under. And at other points throughout the year, you might go to a race where you, it's a preparation race or, you know, the the, the leader is sick or injured and he's not there anymore and the result's not going to be possible. So if you were to pay directors bonuses on victories from teams that you, that we don't choose, necessarily it would create this animosity i, I feel mm. amongst the group like the only way you could ever do it is if you said these are the team goals of the year boom 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 there's 10 goals if we if we hit all of those 10 goals there's a pot of x amount of dollars that goes to the sports directors you know mm -hmm. but to get that pot and to split that pot evenly you have to tick all of those goals because every single sports director will be involved at some point in one of those goals. So mm. that, that would be the only way to do it. But to pay individual bonuses, I think would be, would, wouldn't make sense. That's how I look at it. I, I agree. Yeah. It's, it's a no brainer. It's funny. It's funny where you, you hear stories though on the flip side, getting back to money and like contracts and that, the model is not – if you have an open relationship like you are talking about with Bannon and you feel comfortable or whatever, that is sustainable. And nine times out of ten, you see riders perform above their capabilities because they're mentally – they feel supported and comfortable. On the flip side, geez, when you'd hear stories of Bob Stapleton at HTC where he'd roll up to the Tour de France with a printer and be literally printed off contracts the day before the tour started, sign this now, or basically you won't have a contract next year. Just putting – Young, impressionable riders under the pump. Yeah, that shit's not sustainable. It's obviously mm. not something that would go on now, but 
Yeah. Oh, there's still yeah. tech. There's still tactics like that. Guys will just put down an offer and go, okay, you got two weeks to sign, and then they go, yeah. and then after that, then no, nah, if you don't sign it, we're done. And you're like, oof. So, so it forces riders. It forces riders to like. Uh, you know, a bird in the hand is worth more than two in the tree. So then eventually riders just go, oh, my agent hasn't got an answer out of this team, so I've got two more days. Hey, hey, have you got any answers? And if generally if nothing comes through, that rider just ends up taking it. Unless, unless they feel, you know what, no ways, I, I, I back myself, I'm going to get a better deal. But it's very rare, especially in this world of cycling where it's so few teams so little spots on teams you don't want to yeah. muck around you know there's so many guys that are so good that are just willing to take your spot so mm. um a little bit at the mercy mercy of the teams too and i, I think if teams it's, it must be hard for a team manager as well to play that tactic or that card because ultimately so you want to keep your riders happy too you don't want to have a gun to everyone's head but i guess managers also are stuffing them around agents, you know, that are like uh, trying mm. to play the card. Now we've got this deal now. Uh, so they, I, I reckon they've just gone, no, we have to do it this way. So that we just get an answer and they're coming or not. Otherwise, mm. you just, That's... otherwise you miss other riders, potential riders too. I reckon in the last four years, the best story about contracts and second chances and all that is Clarky not having a contract by January of 2022 and then winning a stage of the tour that year with Israel. Mate, yeah. and Israel, Israel Premier Tech It's the best story. Done, it's, there's some fucking actually awesome stories from this team. And I hope one day it's, it comes out, but well, it's going to, because I'm going to tell you right now. But um, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's Clarkie, who didn't have a contract signed in January that year when he won a Tour de France stage. Yeah. And he's been fucking solid in every single race he's done since then. And he's one yeah. of the most valuable road captains you can have there's stevie williams who didn't have a contract in december 2022 he signed with um the bnb french bloody team oh, that yeah. folded at the last minute didn't have a contract in december israel premier tech gave him one he went to it and under nick short yeah. same thing two days before christmas i was on the phone to him he didn't have a contract bnb wow. fold, folded israel premier signed him like you know and this all got three a of those guys, all over it. all three of those guys are huge parts of this team, you know. They're not just not guys the replacements with Gene they're Hackman. You know big those parts of the team, the, like Major League. You know, like these sort of mm. guys that have just been thrown a bone, and then that's it. It turns around. Yeah. So it's not that's just awesome. a retirement home. It's a fucking team that actually <laughs> has a lot of belief in young dudes and has backed them. I mean, Clark is not young. He's old as shit, but he's fucking solid. <laughs> <laughs> Man, these guys that talk about retirement home, I mean, they're like, okay, we, we are the oldest pel team in the peloton, for sure. But like, uh, when I see some riders, what they do out there, I, I'm like, it's because they don't have a, an old person in their team to tell them like, what do you yeah. do? You know, like, you get in these right, young teams happens. like DSM, DSM, and all these guys, okay, they've got Deccan Cobb and they've been, uh, and I don't want to like so point them out, but like, you're getting some seriously young teams who's like, Guys just think it's like free will, you know, FDJ, all those guys like, man, there's like a system. And that's where this whole flipping peloton has lost its bloody respect and everything. It's just been like sometimes they're just not getting led by the right guys. And, and man, this experience is such a big part in this. Like when you when you give, say, Simon Clark or someone like him a job to do down under, like we, we are we're so calm because we know we've got an experienced guy to do it. And it's not to say that nobody else can, can't do it. But we just know he will be able to do it, you know. Mm. And, and 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 that's what experience is. And you can't bar that. You can't mm. fast track someone to do it. A lot of guys can get there. A lot of guys can do the job. But then maybe in the heat of the moment, they lose their cool. They're not waiting. They're not calm. And 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 that just comes with time. And like well, that's what Israel's actually done pretty well. Is like if you think about the knowledge in our team, you think about the guy, how much knowledge our team actually holds over other teams. We have a, we have a, we're, we're probably like streaks ahead IQ. of other teams, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like race smarts and that we've actually got quite a lot of guys. And then you look at even the directors, like we've got a lot of young directors and then we've still got like a lot of experienced directors. We've actually got quite a lot of knowledge between everybody uh, in the racing scene, you know, um, and, and quite current. Like, I mean, even Chell is our general manager, you know, he, he was racing. I mean, I raced with Chell. You know, so mm. he's not like far away off the off the radar. 
So I think, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think I just basically think we got it, mate, at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the mojo. Well, man. I mean, look at us. We won in Rwanda now. We won in Rwanda. Actually, yeah. it was funny. The other day, I said, no, nah, I'm going to hop on the call. They said, oh, you don't have to come at the five, five o'clock call. And I was like, no, nah, I'll, I'll come on because I want to hear a few winning stories, you know. And then literally I wake up and I'm like, uh, logging on, I'm like, all right, you know, we, we won with on the weekend with Tom van Asbrook and everything, and I was like, all right, I'll hear this story, and then I'm like, oh, shit, it's my one today. It's like, it's so <laughs> rare, because like last year, it took us till like, I think it took May. us till like May or something to get a win. Yeah, our first uh, race when last year was in May, and we've won, we've won five now, we're like, we've had a great start to the year. Mm. Yeah. So where, um, where's the crystal ball, boys? What have we got to look forward to over the next couple of weeks? Mm. Oh, Dean's. Oh, Dean's. We got the sprint. We got um, the sprint group and uh, the new sprint group in um, in UAE at the moment. It's their first race together with Ackerman and Zabel Schwartzman, the kind of the new new sprint group there. So they've been they've yeah. been working hard training together, and this is their first race. They did a good job yesterday, UAE, um, um, for their first race. So they're right up there. So I think I'd, it's going to be good to track them this week. Watch, you know, see how that group. Starts to gel in the in races. Always takes a little mm. bit of time. Um, but one was 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 a pretty good start, I reckon, for them. Um, yeah. Then we got opening Catalonia, weekend, man. Uh, How can you forget opening, opening weekend. weekend? Oh, that's oh, coming up this weekend. Opening weekend that's so is good. like it's just so I don't good. Care Kern, Brussels, you... Kern, and whatever yeah. the other one is. Head Folk or whatever. It's, well, Head what's Folk, it? Head yeah. News yeah. Plus. Head News Head Support Folk whatever team you want. Support whatever team you want to support. But fuck, opening weekend is one of the best weekends of cycling. Oh. Belgians are just itching to get on the piss so good. hard. Yeah, yeah. Did you see yeah. Jumbo Squad? A Jumbo Squad was just like, I was just like, who, how do you beat these guys here? Like, they're ridiculous. Like, is that just a squad, squad is so... Mate, find me one shit park rider in that team. I'll have a look. Hit news for that. Yeah. Dylan Van Baal, Wilt Van Aert, Christoph Laporte, Tish Benut, Jan Trachten, Matteo Jorgensen, Eduardo Affini. Yeah, fucking hell, that's good. Oh, Affini is a bit shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's a such a good guy, man. Eddie. Eh? Oh, Eddie no, is such so a good strong. guy. He's a great I love guy. Eddie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's going to be. Fuck, it's a good. Um, it's like, how do you even pass those guys? Nah. Look. Dylan Van Baal, Wilt Van Aert, Christoph Laporte, Tish Benut. Solid, eh? I don't understand how guys like Ben Art can do the bike across and the road. Well, he didn't do it this year. As well. Really? He? Well, he did a couple, but he didn't do the worlds or anything like that. Well, Vanderpoel did, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking have a break, man. That's no. Nah. I can't work it out. Oh, if I if I was if I was probably making fifty grand a crit I started or whatever they make, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd 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 be doing the cyclocross season. It's a good point. Good yeah, point. Uh, I wouldn't knock that money back, mate. Yeah, fair enough. It was been I'll a bloody for, good. I'll, I'll even do. It. I'll I'll even come back from retirement for half that if they want. If if yeah. anyone has the slightest interest in cash, I think this will be right in their top echelon of episodes. This one. That, yeah. that, this was a real um different episode. It was quite it was quite serious in a lot of ways. Not a lot of no, nah. but like it's good to it's is, good. Is that because it's, we're maturing or what is it? No, I think it's just you get in a roll and we get into a flow, and all of a sudden we're fifty two minutes in. Yeah, yeah, great. That's what happened. Yeah, we, no, it's great should, insight. Sh- well, should we get rid of George and then just slot me in? Yeah, what do you reckon? Yeah, we just... I reckon we could get the financial review to sponsor us. Like just we didn't say anything. Talks and yeah, we didn't say anything that's going to get us cancelled or lose our jobs. No, I don't think so. I think so. I think you went the other way and really did a good suck job on your team. I think mm. you will get a bonus at the end of the year for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, there's actually a couple well, of people from the team that listen to this, so yeah. you got to be careful what you say. You know, yeah, that's it. No, you're safe. Mm. Save your houses. When are you off to Europe again, Imps? I'm I'm heading back uh, in April. I got the Cape Epic before that in in March, but I uh, head to Europe in April. I'm coming to the Ardennes, and Sam and yeah. I will be back together. Nice, so that'd be good. Yeah. And just before we wrap things up, mate, what is living in Sydney everything you thought it would be, or just give us your honest review? No, it's good. No, it's good. Like I mean, the kids are now settled in. Um, I'm semi settled. I'm still. Um, 
finding out what to do yet, but um, no, nah, I'm, I'm enjoying it, man. Like, uh, I actually really, like, I miss, I miss South Africa for sure. I miss Spain. I miss all that stuff. But um, I can really see a well, good future here. So, yeah, uh, yeah good. it's good. It's good, mate. It's, it's, it's been good. Good coffee culture, yeah. Good coffee Not quite culture. Like Melbourne, and you know, you know what I found out? Like, there's just so much to do. The only thing that like, pisses me off is like sport, man. Yes, if they could just leave like Sunday like non-sport like everywhere. Like at least you can have like Sunday off. Because now it's like just like I just don't have a weekend. Like yeah, yeah. just up and it's... down with soccer and other yep. middle one soccer, then the middle one soccer, and then it's an hour away. And then you know what I've realised? Like Australian parents all think their kids are going to be the next superstar. As like, you're here to tell you give you're here to whack head. them with the reality back. No, honestly, <laughs> like honestly, man, I just like some parents. I'm just like I'm standing at, like soccer, and I'm like, man, we're in the we're in the B squad here, which means we're not we're not in the A squad in Australia, which means we're not going to go to Barcelona anytime soon. So like, yeah, just, just just get to the A just cool, first. Just cool your jets and like you know let your kid just have fun for the moment, but um. I think there's a lot of parents here that want it more than their kids, eh? Oof. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Jeez. It. They're everywhere. I, 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 I mean, I, I, that's everywhere in the world, but <laughs> I think Australia's like, whew, The worst? Next <laughs> level. Next level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great. You have, to, great. Fil- you have yeah. to film some, Ims. Fire, put the vision on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Just make I it all sure. about angry, <laughs> just angry sports parents channel. Mate, no, I, I that would watching... go viral. I wanted to punch this other coach from another team because he, he was shouting at his at his poor little players there. He was like just basically telling them like tackle harder. It was not rugby, but like he was yeah. just telling them like tackle them harder, harder, harder. I'm like, man, you're not even talking about passing or anything. You're just talking about like attacking. Him. <laughs> Don't lose that ball. Don't lose that ball. It's like, mate. It wasn't Chutney crutch, was it? Oh, oh geez, Chutney. Just... Jesus. <laughs> But, but otherwise, Australia's great. Like, oh, man, what a place. Seen any snakes yet? Uh, no, I haven't seen any snakes. Loads of spiders. Mm. But, yeah. You know, I've, I've, now, but, you know, then some people are like, oh, like, uh, you know, my wife was first day we get you, and it's just like spider, spider. She's just there with the, like, the repellent, like, psh, 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 yeah, like yeah. around the whole house, like, just. <laughs> like going to war, and then I've like told some people, oh, it's just, the whole day we just like killed spiders. And the one guy was like, "Man, you need to, like take those things and put them in a jar and take them away." I was like, "Man, I'm not gonna touch that thing." Like Fuck that. I, 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 I would, I, I, I don't even. First of all, I don't even know what I'm touching, so like I, I ain't gonna touch it. I've heard there's so many poisonous things. Yeah, so like just give me some days, you know. But um, no, that's just... a good point. People that like and against killing spiders, like sorry. Draw the line. I am. I'm spiders. against it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's the color? Like the little ones. Little ones you can kill. What about the big ones? Well, I can't well, can, well, can kill them. No, well, if I could move them out. If I could move them out. But, you know, when they jump at you, you can... What can you... Mate, how many people die from a spider bite? Yeah, but, like, listen... Why, why, you, you why might, run the it, risk, mate? Why run the risk? You might blow up in hives or something, but you're not going to die. But if your wife says to you, listen, I can't sleep at night, knowing that spider... Is somewhere in here, and it just carries on for days. And you can't find the spider. Eventually, you find it. You just think, well, let me just get rid of it. Like, and, you know, the best of those videos where they've got like the dad who's trying to catch the spider on the roof, and he gets oh. the ladder and the cup. I mean, and you go, this is only going to end one way. Because <laughs> like, yeah. once he captures it, you see, it's like, what are you going to do now, bro? I think yeah, yeah. you see a big huntsman on the wall. Like, I've seen a couple of huntsmen in my time. We got them in New Zealand yeah. as well. Like I, I get it. You see a huntsman on the wall; it kind of gives you the shits because it's the size yeah, yeah. of my fucking hand. Yeah, but they're harmless, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah okay, I, so I, you I, you don't like snakes? I know you don't like snakes. No, well, snakes different story. Okay, I take a shovel okay. to one of them things. No worries. Exactly. Like a snake, I, w- I probably wouldn't kill a snake in my heart. I'd rather like okay, no. I'm gonna call. No, I wouldn't like kill a snake either because I, I wouldn't go near the fucking thing. But like a, a spider, like sometimes I'm like, oh, jeez. Yeah, but- you know, so that's why there's been those storms. You know the the old wives tale: you kill a spider, it makes it rain. No wonder yeah. fucking Sydney got flooded, pissed down with the big storm last Darryl's weekend because there was a fucking spider killing rampage. I tell you, man, it came down here. 
No, stop killing spiders up. and you'll be right. Yeah, right. that's it. Yeah, I, I want to get riding, so maybe I should stop. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's just disclaimer. It's not me killing the spiders. That was my wife. Well, this, this purely is the longest set we've done in a while because we don't have the George Bennett 39 minute. I'm over this, yeah. guys. I'm out. Yeah, I've got a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> no, normally George uh, gets we're good. Third, like almost 39 minutes on the dot and goes oh, no, on the I'm dot. Yeah. We're gonna get we're gonna get a whole new range of merch done, and one of those yeah. was like 39 minutes, and I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> good one. <laughs> yeah. How's your merch going? Before we go, Daryl, how do we get be the Lecco stuff? Mate, just always on Oaks, mate. But it's um, it's taken a bit of a back. Uh, back foot since I've been here, you know. I've got I've had other priorities to sort out, but yeah, we're still yeah. going. We're still going. You know? Far so enough. Little website, oaks.co.za. Then I've got a little store on Etsy. So what is it? Oaks International. Uh, spell it out. O k e s. Co.za. And then the other yep. one is for my, you know, because I I'm not like an international guru, yeah. So I just put uh, it's, it's on Etsy. If you search OCC on Etsy. And you'll yeah, see it. Okay. Or Bilaka. Look for Bilaka, you know, on. Perfect. On, yeah. And what, what's the biggest oh, good, move mate. you got at the moment? The caps, the shirts, or they're all just flying? Hey, the, the caskets and the caskets are always the good one, eh? People love the yeah. caskets. So, yeah. actually, I had a whole bunch of Aussies buy a whole bunch the other day. Yeah. So, it was, uh, it was, I'm kicking on you yeah, in Oz too, mate. They love it. Perfect. They're coming on some Bilaka rods. You know, yeah. It's good. The I've got a little club Spider Man. Here. I've got like a little club here, you know, a little posse, a little community now. Yeah, so perfect. It's good. So if you're in Sydney and you want to find me on Link My Ride, mate, and then uh, come join us on a ride. Buy 10, 10 bits of merch and then you can go for a ride with Daryl. That's how it usually works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to spend at least five grand before you come. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> ideally, right, ideally, thanks ideally, for coming on, mate. Ideally. <laughs> and dollars, Looking forward eh? to grand. you guys smashing it. <laughs> yep. Anything okay. you want to add before we wrap things up, Bills? Nice no. hat, Bills. That's nice hat. Thank mate. you. Yeah, we've also yeah. got some merch. So go to our store <laughs> and buy it. <laughs> I love it how we cross reference yeah, all the time. It's oh, yeah. great. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, well, no, well, nothing well, from me. Good show. Well, great well, show. Good to have you on, Des. On you, yeah. Des. Thanks, guys. Good to see you again. It's nice Who to have. Uh, we've re rewritten the. You know, we've. What did they say? We've. Um, Remade the wheel in terms of yeah. cycling in this just in one hour. Mm. Mm. I think people love this app. Any corporate um, speeches you guys want from us, let us know. We charge 10 grand. Yeah, they, they, don't get, the... they don't get bonuses, they need to make them up somehow. And that's mm. merch, should... corporate talks, anything else. Maybe we should just get all four of us just to like fly around the world and do podcast chats. Mm. And like, mm. you know, huge market. Yeah, we'll... I think so. Yeah, I reckon. Set out arenas. Yeah. Never mind right. Taylor Swift. Oh, shit. If, if, Garen, if Garen Thomas can pull a bloody crowd, so can we. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon. You've got a yellow jersey. Exactly. Well, and they've never won. Yeah. I can yeah. go off my what was, he, he wasn't the first guy in the UK to wear yellow jersey, was he? Whereas you're yeah. the first in first African. Exactly. So, who's he? Mm. All right. yeah. Good finish, right. boys. We'll, we'll, We've really we'll padded out. out that sign off. It's about eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See ya. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs>